Tickets for my live audience with UFC superstar Paddy the Baddy on the 7th of January in Liverpool are now available on Skiddle. Paddy will be doing his first live audience and what a night we have planned. We have a meet and greet and photo opportunity with Paddy. You also can get to ask Paddy some questions. We've also got special guests appearing. This is going to be a night not to be missed and what a way to start off the new year. See you all soon. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. I got locked up twice in one one uh, Bruges. Uh, no, was it Anderlecht? Anderlecht got locked up twice there. And the uh, police said next day, him again. Uh, got deported from Bruges, a load of us, uh, frog march onto the ferry at Zeebrugger. Spent two days in the, in the Mr. Game, spent two days in a police, police in Bruges, you know what I mean? So, well, I can remember me, me meeting Bill Gardner when he came off the train one year, about 50, 60 of him, at ICF, about 1982. Bill walked down the road. Uh, I can remember the police saying we, we all met right near the train station and we was, there used to be a few pubs at the train station, King John at the time, it was all in there. I can remember the police coming in and said, you lot better get off because the ICF are on the way. I think the police had picked them up at Leicester. You better get yourself home, lads. You ain't going to know much for these boys. The first line to the jury was the um, prosecuting barrister put my book up to the jury. This man even writes about his adventures, you know what I mean? He does TV shows about his adventures. That was the first line, the first day of the Crown yeah. Court. A lot of people will never get it, unless you're involved in it, a lot of people will never get it. Mm -hmm. To this day, I'll still get slagged off, you know, doing talks like this, who's he think he is, you, you shouldn't give him publicity. You know, I've just done the documentary for Italia 90, you get comments, people, you know, I, I read the comments, so why are you giving these people the, the time of day and, you know, you shouldn't give them any air time, you know what I mean? But. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got former football hooligan Gary Clark. Pleased to meet you. How are you guys? Not, are? not bad, James. You, not good, mate. Yeah, not thank bad. you. Not bad. First and foremost, thanks for coming on the show. No problem, mate. No problem, mate. You're, you're one of Nottingham Forest's top boys. Used to be. Used to be. Used to be back in the day. Yeah. Uh, well, I won't call it top boy, but possibly in the top 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. You know everyone as well. You know a few of the boys that's been on this show. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. But before we get into all the nitty gritty, I always go back to the start of my guests, where yeah. you grew up and how it all began. Well, I grew up in the inner city of Nottingham, in Slenton, um, in old terraced house or cobbled streets. Um, dad's from Cambridge, mum's from Slenton. I think he met her uh, on a night out in Nottingham. Uh, eventually uh, decided to move up this way from Cambridge. Um, had me. Uh, then uh, he obviously wanted a better, better life and we moved to uh, um, out, out into the suburbs, into a... A nice estate just to uh, get out of, out of the inner city and uh, had my sister then. Uh, went to a school in Clifton, big council estate uh, south, of the, south of the city. Uh, that was it really. My dad was a lorry driver. Mum worked at Port Farms, local factory. Long hours, you know, money money was tight. Struggling to be, bring two kids up on the, you know, as it was back in the 60s, early 70s. Uh, I just... And then obviously went to a, a primary school in Clifton, straight into the football team and fell in love with football. So How were you at school, Gary? Obviously you you had the violence later on in your years, but were you violent as a kid? Not really. I think I think I, I got sort of went that way because uh went to the big school uh, on the council estate up in Clifton when, and they used to call us the Silver Spoon, Silver Spoon Boys because we were from a private estate just down the road and uh, they didn't like it sort of thing. Um, I always say, you know, we, we was good at football and uh, I was never top of the class at school. You know, I was never bottom of the class, but I was middle of the road, but we love our sport. And uh, we had a good football team at school and uh, the bully boys in the bottom form didn't like it. You know what I mean? He used to pick on us, especially because we come from a, a private estate. So I ended up bloody scrapping half the time after school in the woods. There used to be a big set of woods behind the school and they call you out, you know, and have to go in the woods and have a fight in front of 400 school people. You know what I mean? So I think that's why it sort of turned, turned my life into, I wouldn't say it was hard, but I could handle myself, you know, and I stuck up for myself. That's that's the way it went. Yeah. You know what I mean? When did your love for Forrest come about? 
Well, I'll be honest with you, start off with, I, I like uh, my first first team was uh, when I was Leeds United at school because, <laughs> you know, Forest were in the old second division, uh, struggling, just got relegated 72, I think it were. And the top teams at the time were Leeds and Liverpool and Arsenal. And uh, I used to like the Leeds kit, the old white kit. So uh, I sort of like Leeds at school. And a couple of us like Leeds at school. I was always a Forest fan. My first football match ever was Forest against Norwich. My dad took me... It was difficult because my dad was from Cambridge and he liked, he liked the East uh, Anglian teams. And then uh, Norwich were top of the league in the old second division, just got relegated. And he took me to uh, Forest and Norwich. Uh, I think it was about nine. And uh, Norwich pumped Forest 3-1 that day. But I fell in, fell in love with, with the game then, you know what I mean? First football match ever. And I was begging him to set me to a Leeds game and he took me to a couple of Leeds games. My granddad took me to Notts County and Leeds up Leeds, League Cup. And County beat him 1-0. Uh, remember, I'll never, never forget that. And that was 1975. Uh, went to a couple of Leeds games. I went to Leeds and Derby at Derby. I can remember going to um, Leeds and Ipswich in a cup replay, quarter final at Leicester. I think they played about four games. So his dad took me there, dragged him, dragged, uh, managed to drag him there. But he didn't take me to many Forest games. And then uh, Forest got promoted in 76. And uh, one of my dad's mates, uh, he had a season ticket. And uh, he got sent to prison, fighting. And he's not, he wasn't a violent lad, but he's just got to end up in scuffling in the pub and ended up doing six months in prison. And uh, he said, hey, give, give your lad that season, give this, give me a season ticket for the rest of the season. And it was a year we won the league back in the old first division. So I watched uh, Forrest play Liverpool in front of 47,000 then play Everton a couple of days later at Christmas in front of 44,000. Sort of fell in love. And then my dad took me all the league cup finals 70, 77, 78, 79, 98, so took me all at Wembley. You know, I got, I got the bug then, you know what I mean? Was there much violence in the 70s with football oh, yeah. elegance? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I noticed it. You could tell, you know, there's a lot of trouble at Forest uh, mid to, well, probably early to mid, late 70s. They used to have a firm called the Forest Mad Squad. And uh, used to, I used to stand on the cop and the away fans used to be in the East Stand to your right-hand side and all you could see was everything everything going, you know what I mean? There was play riots everywhere. And Forrest had Andy Fern back in, in them days as well. I can remember going to the League Cup final, 980, and uh, <clears throat> we're walking down Wembley Way. Next minute, it's about 200 lads in green flying jackets come running past, chasing a load of wolves lads down Wembley Way. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was only a kid, you know what I mean? You think, flipping heck, you know, what's going off here? See, so when right. Forrest are in the second division, when did Brian Clough take over? 1975, because he, he, yeah, 1975 was in the old second division. I think it was about fifth, sixth bottom when he took over. And it, I didn't think he won for the first eight games. How does a man do that to come into a club who's floating about the second division yeah. to then being in cup mm. finals, Europe, winning the European Cup twice? Like, mm. did you were on, must have been a kid then, yeah, when right. late seventies. But was there a, any feeling that this man was going to be one of the greatest managers well, in Britain? Well, he, he did well at Derby, didn't he? He won, he won the, the league, I, I think he won the league at Derby, mm. and then he took him to the semi final of the uh, European Cup. Mm -hmm. I think then he lost to Juventus. I think that was. Um, I think the ref rigged that game anyway, so he was successful already. Then I think I don't know if he went to Brighton, but he, no, he went to Leeds, took over Dom Re Dom Reeve, didn't he? And he got sacked for forty four days because the Leeds players were so much used they didn't like him. And Cluffy told him how it was, you know what I mean? Put all, I think the first day for all the medals in the bin, it says that counts for nothing now. So you know what I mean? And the, 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 it was player power got rid of him. Mm -hmm. I think he ended up Brighton then, and then the uh, Forest took a gamble and he, he came to Forest and then that, you know, I think the first trophy he won was the Anglo-Scottish Cup in 1976 and then it's just the rest is history, isn't it? You know what I mean? See the violence between the second division and first division and see when you get promoted, does the violence become more extreme because obviously it's bigger crowds, bigger games, is yeah. it more to kind of lose? It was in them days. Mm -hmm. It was in them days, bigger crowds and there was no cameras, you know, there was no segregation really. You know, it was mixed, wasn't it? In them days, not like the Premier League is now. There's more violence that happens in the lower leagues these days, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But in, back in them days, you, you get to the old first division, bigger mobs, you know, big, bigger firms, and there's probably more, more violence in them days. And as a kid watching it, you're thinking, well, what's going off here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, what made you join the casual scene? Uh, well, by accident, really, because uh, I, I used to go to I still went to a couple of Leeds games when, when I was at school, 15, 19, 8, 10, and uh, 1981. And uh, I can remember going to a, a game at Notts County, first game of the season. And I bumped into these lads in town and uh, they fought us from Leeds. Anyway, they gave us a couple of slaps, me and my mates. I think it was all from Nottingham at the time. Got a couple of slaps around the ear hole and that and uh, kicked up the arse and the police come. And uh, anyway... So that's the first time I discovered drinking. So I was going out, just left school then, 
I was still at school then, 15. So a few weeks later, I just left school, sort of going in Nottingham City Centre. And I kept bumping into the same lads that gave me a slap. And they all come over to me and says, uh, here's that Leeds fan. We thought you're from Leeds. I said, no, I'm from Nottingham. You know what I mean? And uh, anyway, I kept bumping into me in Nottingham every week then. And there was a, a late bar at the time called Harvey's Bar in West Bridgeford. I used to go there on a Sunday night as a kid, 16. And there was always in there. Anyway, I got friendly with them. And there, there was always trying to sway me to come away with him to Forest. You know, come, come with his lot. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I must admit, I went to a few Leeds games and uh, all they did were wreck things, smash things up. You know, there was that many of them. Mm -hmm. The Forest... The Forest firm at the time was all in jail because a Middlesbrough kid got killed at Borough. So a lot of the main lads were locked up, locked up at the time. And uh, there, there weren't that many of them, but they, they were casual. And I was, I was casual. I was casual less year at school. And that's what I liked about the football scene. I was noticing how different, how different firms, different areas, different cities were doing different stuff. You know, I liked, I liked the way everyone dressed. So I, I really got into it. And um, anyway, they got me one, one week. They said, we're going to Arsenal. Do you fancy going to Arsenal with us? I was go on then. I relented. So I'd go on, I'll go to Arsenal with you. I went on the service train. I think it was 53 of us went on the service train. Back in the day, the old Ivory Stadium, there weren't many forests went away then in them days. I think it was 1982. And uh, they used to have ticker tape in the middle of the uh, old clock end. And to get to your end, you had to walk through the Arsenal fans. And I think I had a Pringle on, faded jeans, wedge ear cut. And uh, the old bill escorted you in, but we just got everybody. I was covered in saliva. I managed to get to the forest section. I was just covered in spit. You know what I mean? After the game, we went back to King's Cross. Arsenal landed at King's Cross and there was running riots all, all over the shop. You know, it was back and forth. Anyway, the police got fed up with it and uh, they said, right, you lot stop here on this corner. I think it was about 35. They arrested the whole lot of us, 35 of us, put us in court and uh, got to, knocked up at Oldbourne Police Station. They said, right, you're in court such and such a date. And I said, well, I can't make it. I'm already in court in Leicester that day. So they put my, the, the forest lot had two minibuses to go to court in Auburn and they set a trial at uh, Elephant and Castle, IRA court, two day of trial. So we all had to go down for a two day, tr two day trial down at Old, uh, Elephant and Castle. Uh, spent, I was more excited about a night out in London, you know what I mean? I think I got 80 pound fine. You know, and they're trying to send our main lads to prison, but I think they come away with 150 quid. But back in 1982, it's quite a bit, a lot of money, wasn't it? You know what I mean? So I got. I reckon that's when I got the bug. We're going away with forest casuals. You know what I mean. So they were doing sentences then, but early eighties. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of our lot locked up at the time. Uh, one of our lads got four and a half years at Windlesbury. A lot of lads got locked up at Windlesbury six months. A lot of the borough lads got locked up, you know, for a fray. So you know, it was, it, it was big, big, big prison oh, yeah. in them days, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, because I thought you know it I mean? started in the nineties when people started getting big no, sentences. No, they got, you know, one of our one of my good mates got four and a half years back in the day. How was the, the fight set up then back in the day, early 80s? It was spontaneous, really. You know, early 80s. It was early 80s. You'd, you'd, you'd say, right, we're going to away game. There's either service train or vans and cars. Meet the nearest pub to the train station. You know, and we'd, and that was a crack. We'd, we'd mob up at the train station. You know, wherever you went, you was going to, you was going to get it in another city because everyone had a mob, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You know. What was the the casual scene like then? Was it Fila? Was it uh, yeah. was that Fred yeah. Perry? It started off with slashing the jumpers. I mean, Liverpool started it, didn't they? Late mm -hmm. 70s. Moe jumpers, wedge air cuts. They used to go to Europe, coming back. We all, then the sports gear come in. You know, it was, and then it was slashing the jumpers. Then Pringles came in, Sly and Scots. Then it was Fila, Lacoste, you know, Leslie's. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Forrest got back in Europe and we come back with a new wardrobe. You know what I mean? So, because in them days, you didn't have much money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. So, see when Forrest are winning everything then? Does it, do you then become a target? Does Forest fans become a target because they they are winning, or is it just a case that it's all the same? Uh, no, because we're a big club, aren't we? Because we're winning stuff. You know what I mean? We're a big team, and, and you know, we, to get to uh, over over cities, you know, Forest are in town. You know what I mean? And so everyone turned out for you. So yeah, it, it caused more problems really being successful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Who was the toughest firm you came up against? I'd say West Ham. West Ham, we had a doubt. It was scary. They was especially going down their place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, West Ham. Man United were good because were they had the numbers, you know, but they were good anyway. Uh, Arsenal were pretty good back in the day as well. Um, a lot of Portsmouth, you know, a lot of, you know, everybody had a little mob, but the, the, yeah, Middlesbrough were good. Birmingham, best probably the best in the Midlands. Forest were good, you know what I mean? They could hold their own. Uh -huh. you know, but even Leicester, they had, a, they had a decent baby squad. I get Derby, you know, Derby would always have a fight, you know what I mean? Every um, Hooligan I've had on, they've always says Middlesbrough. Yeah, Why is that? yeah, it was a it was a dodgy place to go. The old Earson Park, 
Yeah, it was it I can remember going there night game, it was it was eerie place to go. Mm -hmm. You know, they travelled everywhere as well. They went everywhere. You know what I mean? You, oh tough 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 city, it's more tough town, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you know Did you mean? ever go away to Europe with Forest? Yeah, yeah. Um I, I missed the European Cup day, so I slept at school and, and my dad never never took me, you know what I mean? Because he's from Cambridge and, and no one to take me. I went to a couple of the home games, obviously. But uh, when we got back in the UEFA Cup 1983, started travelling, had my own money, then started going away with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then sort of getting a few scrapes and locked up abroad, Did unfortunately. Ever, yeah. What was it like being locked up abroad? Uh, yeah. I got locked up twice in one one uh, Bruges. Uh, no, was it Anderlecht? Anderlecht got locked up twice there. And uh, the police said next day, him again. Uh, got deported from Bruges, a load of us, uh, frog march onto the ferry at Zeebrugge. Spent two days in the in the Mr. Gain. Spent two days in a police police in Bruges. You know what I mean. So but then then you, you didn't really bother. You know what I mean. It's just all part and parcel of the fun. Now again, I mean? you go to places like Poland, Ukraine. Like mm. they're all MMA fighters. They're all yeah, tough bastards. Right. Like, like yeah. did you ever see any professional fighters back then? Or was it just a case of free for all? No, no. I, I must admit. I mean, I, I, I've travelled with England from the mid mid eighties and. Uh, they want really anybody to touch it. It's probably the Germans. The Germans are always big lads. Uh, G uh, Germany '88. You know they they hold their own sort of thing. But they didn't they notice the Poles till probably early '90s. And uh, went to Poland away twice, three times. I missed missed one game because I got stuck in Germany. But uh, the Poles, you know, you could tell. You know, the train. You could tell there was mm -hmm. fighters. You know what I mean? But uh, be honest with you, back in the day, England didn't give a to hooch you know what I mean that, you know it's alright being like that you know what I mean we've got to have it up there as well mm -hmm. uh, Bat a bottle yeah, yeah why do you think England are always at the forefront every World Cup Euros it's always England causing it like, do you think that's just ingrained into the football uh, hooliganisms kind yeah, of things I think it's, it stems from the 60s and 70s you know what I mean I mean there's nobody back in the 70s it, it's gone full circle now and it England calls it you know and nowadays not bothered are they everyone's packed it in you know we're all grown up um, it's mainly fans that follow England now. Back in the day when I went in the early 80s, you'd take four or 500 fans away and they'd all, all be lads. I'm coming with the old Yugoslavia in 87 and it was just all boys. But it took four or 500. When we won 4 1, Lineker scored all them goals. It was just pure boys. And no one was scared, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there were dodgy places to go, Turkey, yeah. you know what I mean? What's the difference fighting for England to fighting for Forest? Is it the same or is it a think, kind of different buzz? Uh, it, I, I used to enjoy going with England back in the day, but when it was just pure lads. But nah, I don't, I don't like it. I, I don't. I've been to an England away game since Munich in two thousand and one. Uh, I don't get. I don't like going away now with England because there's too many cheer throwers and too many idiots that cause trouble for no reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back in the day, it was boys that used to like, like have a drink, and you know, if someone came came, it came. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But these days, it's a bit more mindless. You know minus violence so yeah. I, don't, I don't like things like that you know I don't, be honest with you these days I don't, I don't like violence anyway mm -hmm. you know bloody 20 years since I got involved in truck, football trouble now you know what I mean so what was it was like for you that was every week did you start forgetting about the football and just concentrating on the fighting or was it the do both yeah event, eventually yeah I think uh, mid 80s sort of thing the football went out the window and it was you know earlier you know I was a football fan I've always been a football fan but once you got into the casual scene and you saw again, your mindset started going that way, gang culture and that. It, it was like, you know, are we going to get some of this Saturday? You know, you, you you plan your day all week, you know what I mean? And what we're going to do, where we're going to meet, how we're getting there. And uh, it was a buzz, you know, we're going to meet like-minded like, like, like -minded lads that want to have a go at you, you know what I mean? And, and that took over the football then, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like you say, I'm a football fan, I've always been a football fan and we know more about football than what people think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what about Millwall? Why are they always high up the ladder with the respect? Were they that. high up? Were they respected in the seventies and eighties also? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are a doubt. They've always been respected. I, just, I think they got a conveyor belt that just keeps running them off. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, they get uh, like that many get locked in locked in prison, get banned. No, I think they just got like a, a factory machine that just keeps mm -hmm. getting them, you know, like rolling them off. Yeah, I've never seen so many of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they all come from from the estate. You know what I mean? It's a dodgy place to go. You know yeah. what I mean? Who's a tough? Who's the like a tough man you've you had respect for like with the thumbs? Well, I can remember me, me, meeting Bill Gardner when he came off the train one year, about fifty, sixty of him, ICF about nineteen eighty two. Bill walked down the road. Uh, I can remember the police saying we, we were all met right near the train station, and we was there used to be a few pubs at the train station. King John at the time was all in there, 
I can remember the police coming in and said, you lot better get off because the RCF are on the way. I think the police had picked them up at Leicester. You better get yourself home, lads. You ain't going to know much for these boys. Anyway, uh, they come off the train and Bill come down the front with about 50 behind him. He had this long duffel coat on, curly blonde hair. And I was about 17 off, and I thought, shit, look at that lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, mm. you know. Did you get that a lot? Because we spoke about Big Baz earlier before we started mm. and he's a big unit. Oh, like, yeah. He's massive, yeah. kickboxing yeah. world champion. Mm. See when you're going forward towards people and you think, fuck, I'm, I'm in for it here. That well, you've yeah. just got to get the head yeah. down and got just head down and, yeah, it's, and, you know, if you know, as as your mates back you up, you know what I mean? If your mates don't back you up, then you're in, you're in the shot, aren't you? You know mm. what I mean? Right. How was Big Ball? Because I've had him on a podcast, absolute yeah. gentleman, yeah. and to hear the backstory of like being homeless as a kid and then mm. like kind of bare knuckle fighting from a very young age, that like, it's sad to see as well. But the respect he's got from mm. everybody all yeah. around the UK yeah. like, is unbelievable. Right. That mm. let's like, see when you fought for England as well, was everything put to the side? Uh, not in the early days, in the 80s. I can remember West Ham we used to have it with Man United quite a lot of away games, you know what I mean? And West Ham kept themselves to themselves, you know. Uh, but like Forrest and that, we'd mix. We weren't really bothered, you know what I mean? And a lot of the lower teams and lower clubs, they would all mix. But there was the top firms that didn't want to mix, like West Ham, you know what I mean? They kept themselves to the... And be honest with you, they didn't always turn out. United didn't always turn out. But when they did turn out, they kept themselves to themselves. But uh, like Bill's a legend. You know who Bill was, you know, when he was at school, you know what I mean? He's, he's renowned throughout the country, you know what I mean? And he was an hard man, you know. He was a very hard man, you know what I mean? Not many people could touch him. Yeah. So you've got someone like that leading you. Well, I won't say he was a leader, uh, actual hooligan leader. He was just a, a, an influence at West Ham. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Front runner. Yeah, yeah. Guy, yeah. And everyone looked up to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's a gentleman, like you say. He's a lovely bloke. Mm -hmm. I went to his first book launch and I think there's only three or four of us that uh, went on the old Barking Road at uh, West Ham Social Club. Uh, obviously got invited by Baz, Baz and, and Cass and... Uh, a couple of people told me not to go. They said, you know, it's a dodgy place to go, like, you know what I mean? I was treated like, everyone treated me brilliant, you know what I mean? I think me and Andy went, Nichols, uh, my mate Harry went, and uh, I think there's three or four of us, and, and it was four or five hundred ICF, old school ICF, you know what I mean? Everyone was good as gold. And you're told not to go and just in yeah, case? Yeah, a lot of people told me, don't, don't, you know, watch yourself, don't, I won't go down there, you know, you could get you, you know, you filled in, whatever, you know what I mean? But honestly, everyone were good as gold. Mm -hmm. Andy uh, Nichols, he's a funny bastard, but yeah, how'd you end yeah. up pals with Andy? He's Everton, he's yeah. Everton's boys, huh? Yeah, I met, I met, a lot of us met through the books, you know, because um, first met Cass through the books, he asked me to do Terrace Legends, uh, 2003, but I had a court case going on at the time, and so I couldn't do it. I said, I'm still, still, you know, I've got this court case going on. What if I stop doing, it, doing that book? You know, it could go against the court. Mm -hmm. So I, I recommended one of my mates do it, and he did it. And then um, he contacted me again. He was doing the follow-up called Top Boys. So I said, you know, I'd already done uh, some prison for this thing. I came out, and that was me. I thought, no way I'm getting involved anymore. That was me. I've I, I decided to pack it up, you know. It's a young man's game now anyway. I, was, I think I was 39 at the time. And I thought, you know, if, if I carry on doing what I'm doing, I'll, I'll end up with bigger prison sentences. Mm -hmm. It's time to turn my life around. And that's what, so I said to Cass, I'll do Top Boys book. And uh, I'm not sure if Andy did, might have done Terrace Legends, but obviously Cass got us all on the book book scene. And then we'd, we'd do book launches. And I got to meet these guys at book launches. And we all, we're all the same. We just support different clubs. And we all got on with each other. You know, same interests, and we all become friends. Yeah, you know what I mean. Do you think you could have been friends with these other guys in your twenties? Now, uh, it would have been more difficult because uh, a lot of lads didn't like you bringing other other lads from other cities in into your into your like uh, back 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 garden. You know what I mean? And it's very rare that happened in the eighties. You know, uh, I had a couple of mates from Sheffield. They used to come over and I used to go England matches with them, and uh, they become they was all right. You know what I mean? But if you brought someone in. I don't know. It wouldn't have happened back in the eighties because someone, somebody would have got upset and there would have been, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and then the England scene got bigger in the nineties. I think with more lads going and become more friendly with each other. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, and then back end of the nineties, early two thousands, everyone started mixing more. You know what I mean. So even the cameras and that started coming about. Did it become more harder to organise? Oh yeah, of course it did. I mean the camera killed the cameras killed it, didn't it? You know what I mean. I mean. You know, the police got all that, you know, fast you started that, didn't you? But then, then the mobile cameras come in, mobile phones come in. Um, once CCTV was all over, it's most police uh, cameras, uh, country in Europe, innit? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You couldn't do it. You'd get a knock on the door six months later. You know, it's a waste of time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, See, when you start getting the jail and stuff, do you, is it just want to come straight back out and straight back involved or do you start reevaluating things? Well, I got, I got, um, 
Borstal detention centre in the early 80s, 84. You know, at um, Nevada, I never go back in, but um, it didn't deter me, to be honest with you. I didn't deter me. I got even more into it. But uh, when I got that prison sentence in 2004, then that I thought, you know, because I was offered to do a book before that and I refused it. Right. But, and uh, I refused it because I was still active. And I, didn't, mm -hmm. and I thought once you do a book, you, you can't get back involved. You, yeah. You're a mug if you do a book and then you get involved again. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got in trouble uh, 2006. And then I, I was I was in the pub at the wrong time. The pub went up. And obviously, because I'm there, three months later, my door went in. And I, I spent a week in Crown Court. And uh, I thought I got found guilty at the end of it. I was looking at three years in prison. And the first line, in them days, back in 2006, they, they could actually incriminate you and they put the first line to the jury was the um, prosecuting barrister put my book up to the jury this man even writes about his adventures you know what I mean he does TV shows about his adventures mm -hmm. that was the first line the first day of the Crown yeah. Court you know what I mean and uh, luckily as the, as the week went on the trial went on the, the jury I had a brilliant barrister and a brilliant solicitor and uh, you know the jury saw sense and we got not guilty on the Friday mm -hmm. you know and that you know pff, and I packed up the, the, being involved in that two or three years before, but it was a bit of a setup. you know what I mean? What's your longest sentence for? I've only, done, done? only four months, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, four months is enough, you know what I mean? I mean, a lot of my mates have done, you know, three, four, five years, you know what I mean? What was so, that for? Uh, there was a big, big fray against Everton in 2000, no, sorry, uh, 1985. A lot of the lads got, I think they got 38 years between them. That's a lot, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, two of my mates got five and a half. Um, and the, the Middlesbrough in 1980-81, uh, one of my mates got four and a half. A lot of the lads got, you know, but I remember the big Everton affray. Uh, I think there weren't that many of them and they got 38, 38 years between them. It made all the national press, all over the national headlines, newspapers. You know what I mean? That's a big deterrent, isn't it, when you get yeah. bird for that. Yeah. And half of them just even throw a punch. You know what I mean? What you're thinking then, if you, you do a few months, that, do you think that's that kind of... Like a not like medal of honor, but it's like you've earned your stripes. When you come back out, you've got a bigger <clears throat> swagger and yeah. Well, back in the day, when in the eighties, when you were very young, you know, in your teens and early twenties, yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know what I mean? But when you're getting on a bit, like you say, I got prison prison at thirty nine. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? You know what you're doing in what you're doing in Durham Jail at thirty nine. You know, when I, I should be on holiday for celebrating my birthday in Thailand. You know, mm -hmm. so you know you think to yourself now, sat in that cell. That's when I decided to write my book. Mm -hmm. When I sat in that cell, you know what I mean. What's your hardest fight? It's been many, that many. It's been that many. <laughs> you know what I mean? but who did you like, enjoy Birm coming up B against? B Birm Birmingham was always a difficult one to go to. I remember the FA Cup at Birmingham? Uh, I think it was about eighty-seven. That was mayhem that day. That made the national press. I think there was ninety-three arrested for from landing there at eleven o'clock in the morning. From going home at six at night, it was just non-stop all day. You know, mm -hmm. you, you didn't get a minute. So, so mm -hmm. that was a difficult day. Who was the uh, like the toughest? Who's the, the what was the ground you you like to go to the most? I did like the most dangerous ones to be honest with you. I'll give me the the biggest buzz. West Ham, Birmingham. yeah, West Ham, Middlesbrough, Birmingham, Man United. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, the most difficult places to go gave you the bigger buzz. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was at it, you know what I mean. I think it gave you the bigger adrenaline rush. How many was involved with Forest? Yeah. Uh, when I first started going, because everyone was locked up for Middlesbrough, it was it they want a lot, you know, probably fifty to hundred. But you know, when we got it together in sort of eighty three, eighty four, eighty five, you know, it it rose to three four hundred. Late eighties, Forest were big on the England scene. Early nineties, I, I think in the mid nineties, we we came, we rose right at the top of the tree. I remember reading a police report when we went to Chelsea. Uh, the, the inspector that's policing the game says, uh, "Forest are number one in Britain." You know, at the time, and, and we 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 take four hundred places like Chelsea. You know what I mean? Oh. What so, was Chelsea like? Chelsea was a tough place to go back in the day. The headhunters. Yeah, that was a tough place. Everywhere was tough. You know, everywhere was tough. Everyone had a, had a little had a little mob. You know, there was no easy. You know, if you underestimated anybody, that's when you get turned over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what about for the international scene? Was there any? Obviously, you mentioned Germany before, but was there any stood out and you thought, "Fuck me, they're a tough lot." There was dodgy. I won't say they were tough, but there was there was dodgy places to go, like Turkey. You know what I mean? The, the, you know, you'd go there not not looking for it, but the locals didn't like you. You know, mm -hmm. you know they, they didn't like you the way you behave, getting drunk. You know what I mean? And and then you, you, you could upset them so easy. Next minute, you got all the locals on your back, but they they they're carrying knives. You know what I mean? And people getting yeah. caught up. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're dodgy places. You know what I mean? Yugoslavia. Yeah. You know. What about Italy? 
Italy, same in Italy. They, they carry the knives, don't they? They don't fight you, do they? Yeah, a lot stab, of the time. Yeah. yeah, they stab you. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a, that's a difference, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. What about Cass? I know you're friends with Cass as well. Yeah, good mates with Cass. Yeah, mm. I've been very good friends with Cass. Done a lot of stuff with him over the years, books, um, events and stuff. You know what I mean? I, I put a few events on early 2000s you know, with Cass. Um, we had Danny Dyer. A mate had a pub in Arnold where, where I lived. Uh, we have had Howard Marks there. Uh, Carlton Leach, we, you know, to put a few events on, always sell out, you know. So, yeah. See, when like, the films like Football Factory, Green Street, mm. does that enhance that sort of reputation as being a football hooligan? It probably did, yeah. I would say it did, yeah. Um, so, I've been in a couple of Cass's uh, stuff in the films and stuff, but then again, it, yeah, it's probably gives a wrong impression to young, young lads, you know what I mean? But then, but then again, it, it's not. It's not these days. It one. Uh, it, it's it's a British subculture, isn't it? You know, they're always going to film stuff about about it. Everyone finds it interesting. Same with the mods and rockers and the and the telly boys back in the fifties. There's always going to people want to film, make films about stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's no difference, is it? It's it's been happening for seventy years in British culture, yeah. hasn't it? You know what I mean? Why do you think it's so popular? Why do you think people love these sort of chats as well, like the football violence? That like, why is it? Do you think it is popular? I think because. <laughs> People find it interesting because normal Joe blogs, you know, it, it, they find it interesting because they haven't been part of it and they want to have the bottles be part of it and it makes good TV. Because you know, yeah. so. you'll get people saying, oh, grown men, they should join boxing or MMA. Like, yeah, I agree with that as well. I yeah. totally agree with that. You know what but I mean? how does that, what is that buzz then like, to be at the forefront if there's 100 men, 200 men all fighting? Like, is that a totally different buzz from... People, people can't really understand it if they've mm. never really done mm. it, have they? No, no, I don't, no. You know, a lot of people will never get it unless you're involved in it. A lot of people will never get it. Mm -hmm. To this day, I'll still get slagged off. You know, doing talks like this. Who's he think he is? You, you shouldn't give him publicity. You know, I've just done the documentary for Italia ninety. You get comments. People, you know, I, I read the comments. You know, why are you giving these people the the time of day? And you know, you shouldn't give them any air time. You know what I mean? But if you don't do it. You know, I always preach to people, we did it back in the day, you know, and I don't, I, you know, and we know it was wrong. We know, we all know it was wrong, but, you know, we did it, so we ain't going to get out of it, you know, and people ask us what it was like, and I always say to people, it, it's, it wasn't worth it, but, I, I, you know, I want to met the people I met, I met these days, fans have done it, you know, I mix with nice people yeah. these days, I'm, I mix with TV stars, and, you know, and I've got, I get to, I, yeah, I've got a book out, mm -hmm. you know, and the second book's going to come out. And uh, people know I'm all right, you know. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have me in the company if they didn't think I was all right, you know what yeah. I mean? And we all make mistakes in life, you know yeah, what I mean? Everybody's got too much to say, but these yeah. conversations that like, I've interviewed murderers, yeah. bank robbers, drug lords, like, and people love them because it's their chat. Not, yeah. you don't just because I interview them doesn't I mean I agree with everything, yeah. That's, done, right, that's right, it's yeah. just an interesting story how people mm. go down that path, that's right, and why they do it and what they've yeah. done. and we can all make changes when we go we can all look back and go ah, I shouldn't have done that yeah. everybody makes mistakes but there'll been a time in your life you'd have absolutely loved it and thrived on it and mm. been that brotherhood sort of who was yeah. interviewed Paul Doyle and that's what he says he had two sets of friends he had the gangsters mm. and he had the football casuals and he says it would go with the football casuals 100% of the time yeah. if need yeah. be because there was always 100 of them and there's 100 of them wouldn't turn away that's right. says all the gangsters would snitch on each other yeah. turn on each other yeah. and you don't know whether they're going to kill you yeah. you know what I mean these lads will get they'll have your back you know what I mean you can trust them there's not many you couldn't trust back in the day and over the years I've become good friends with different firms as well you know we're really good friends I want to met them if I've gone down that path you know I go to uh, when I go to away games now you know I go to Bristol City the Bristol lads take me hospitality they come up to Nottingham have a night out I take them hospitality you know Middlesbrough same at Middlesbrough I'm good mates with the Borough lads now Newcastle you know, London, West Ham, you know what I mean? We're all good pals now, you know what yeah. I mean? We've got a story to tell. And the lads that did it can actually actually tell the people now it's, it's not worth it, you know, and we're role models to tell them, you know, it's not worth it, keep out of it, you know what I mean? That's mm. what we try and do these days. Yeah. I do a lot of talks, you know, I don't like, like to encourage people to get involved in it. You know, I talk about the past, you yeah, know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, it's the future now. Yeah. You know, I will tell people it's not worth it, you yeah. know what I mean? You're not glorifying it, it's not no. as if... If you were speaking to, if I was speaking to you and you were in your twenties, you'd be saying, "I love this life. I yeah. do what I do." Like, yeah. but yeah. like you say, people get people get older, people make changes, mm. and at that time, yeah. people have chosen that path That's because right. it's all they knew. Yeah. Feel, what was it like though to feel part of like a gang and people who would have your back no matter what? Was that empowering? Well, yeah, because I mean, at the time, you, you know, you're talking 90, early nineteen eighties Britain when they want a lot work about. 
you know, and, and the jobs you got were mundane jobs, you know, and you had to listen to a load of bollocks off some idiot that didn't, <laughs> didn't have a clue, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, some jobs worth, you know, and you think, oh God, I've got to put up with him all week, you know what I mean? And Saturday, you know, it's exciting. You go into a football game, you're in another city, you're wearing, you're wearing nice clothes, you've got your mates you, you're going to have a good laugh with, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it was an adrenaline rush, you know, you, you know it's just, it just the time, of the time of the times, you know what I mean? What's it like if you get run from another firm? Well, you know, I must admit, it's, it's happened now and again. You know, it'd be a tell a lie if, if, if it didn't, you know, but, you know, it, it can ruin your sad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It ruins your, um, I don't know, uh, street cred for a bit, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I had a copper on a few weeks ago, but he went undercover for Millwall. Oh, I've seen him on the telly in 90. Yeah. yeah and he's he, on the documentary, isn't he? Yeah, he'd done yeah. the film ID about yeah. him. Like, were you ever concerned that there could have been coppers mm. in your firm? Yeah, you yeah, know, everyone was paranoid in um, early mid mid eighties when, especially when we started infiltrating firms, and and it, you know the West Ham lot got done, and the Chelsea lot got done. Ike, Steve Ickmott, I know he's a good friend of mine from England games, you know, and they all got done. And Chubby Chris Henderson uh, tried to do him. They, I know Chris really well. Met him at England first England away game actually Spain. I, I, t I went went on a bus with the Chelsea lot from uh, from uh, Chelsea on a Sunday night. What a trip that was. Uh, eventually become good friends with Chris and he, he emigrated them like them on the money they got off compensation they all emigrated to Thailand and bought bars mm -hmm. and up buying the bar off him in, in Thailand off Chris you know what I mean mm -hmm. so how many people would fight for England <clears throat> well yeah, uh, yeah we all come together didn't we you know what I mean I, like I said I said in Italian 90 interview recently nobody could touch England in the uh, 80s uh, early 90s nobody could touch us you know what I mean so it's only it's only it's all come full circle now. It's come back to haunters, really, hasn't it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, look at look at bloody Marseille with the Russians now. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. come back full circle, hasn't it? How was it when you see? Was it who was it? Was it the Leeds fans who get killed? Yeah, in Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, in Turkey. Yeah. How is yeah. it when you, you read things like that? There's a possibility it could have happened to yourself. Well, that's, or... that's right because I went to Turkey with England, mm -hmm. and like I said earlier, you know, they carry knives. You upset the locals. You know, you're probably not doing anything wrong. The Leeds fans probably won't do anything wrong. It's probably a bit mm -hmm. boisterous in the pub, singing Leeds songs. The locals don't like it. Don't like you getting drunk. You know what I mean? That somebody got abusive to somebody. Next minute, the knives are out. You know what I mean? They haven't really done too much, too much wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what these countries used to visit. That what that's what happened yeah you know what i mean that's the sad thing isn't it's it? sad you know it's sad I mean? when yeah. it, like, if it's families going to the game and there's they're caught in the crossfire that's right but, it's probably you know like you say it's, that's probably happened because of because of the reputation of england fans in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. you know you're watching that i tell you 90 program of the last couple of weeks you know everyone's afraid the england fans and the locals all turn out for you and they, they don't take no shit they don't want it to do on, the, on their doorstep yeah. but half the time the england fans are just having a good time and they, that, that's not their culture, is it? England fans like to just get drunk, have a bit of a sing song. And half the time, they, they think you're trying to cause trouble, but we, they ain't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, How is it that when it's all over the news, though? That, that Do you think the news glorify it a bit more? Well, but, yeah, the papers did glorify it. You know, mm -hmm. I said this recently in that documentary. I can remember going over to Germany in 88, and, you know, and... Uh, the papers glorify it, you know what I mean? That, you know, it, 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 those paying people to cause trouble, you know, the, the press were out there actually giving lads money. Go on, go and play, throw some glasses, do this, do that. You know what I mean? That's what the press were like back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Why uh, do you think there's so much negative press when England playing World Cups and stuff? Well, it's, it's, it's always been the same, hasn't it? It stems from the 70s when England ran right around Europe, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I think Italy was the first tournament that was trouble in 1980, wasn't it? Where the CS gas went up, mm -hmm. gas went off behind the bar, uh, behind this, behind the stand. I think England, Italy, won it. Mm -hmm. You know, and England's always had bad reputation in tournaments since then. The Spanish police were heavy handed in 82. There was trouble in Spain in 82, weren't they? Uh, even in Mexico, 86. I think the Argentinians caused more trouble than anybody. A lot of England fans got attacked in in Mexico by Argentinian fans. You know what I mean? Um, and then it was your 88, there was a lot of trouble out there. You know, England, that was when England were really sort of going places. Um, like Scotland used to come down in the 70s, take over London, didn't they? And then in the very early 80s, England fans had enough for that, thought that we were sort of going up to Glasgow. And uh, and we, I think I went to Glasgow 87, 89, that's when we first started travelling. We went to a previous one, England, first time I ever went. Uh, but England for well, you know, because the Scottish over used to take over London, didn't they? You know what I mean? But I think England fans had enough of it eventually. Thought sod it, we're going to defend London. You know what I mean? Oh. So, Do you miss that? <laughs> not, not really, not really. Now, you know, my, my life's moved on. It's changed. You know, 
I don't mind talking about the past. It's it's what I did. You know, I don't like violence now. I've got a twelve year old son that I take to football. You know, if, you know, you, you look back and think in them days, not many families went to football. You know, it wasn't a family orientated game. It was just pure lads or football fans. And if you did, did go to away games, I said I repeat this used to get kicked to shit anyway if you want a flipping hooligan or he's a normal fan. And half the time, the normal fans used to love it seeing his lot because they'd walk back to the station with us know they're being safe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's completely changed now. Football, it's a family orientated game, which is for the better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I set my son there. I don't like, I would hate him to see any violence. I don't want him going down that path. You know what I mean? Yeah, what happens right. if the wee man, 17, 18, no one says to you, look, dad, I'm in the firm lap. Yeah, well, you'll get, you get a bit of a slap around the arse, <laughs> don't you? you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. that's one thing I do regret. It's put me a for a lot of crap over the years, you know what I mean? And the, the police knocking on the door all the time, you know, mum mum and dad, you know, putting them through a lot of sleepless nights, you know. That's one I do regret that, you know what I mean? Did they like, did they know then that what you were doing? Yeah, the uh yeah, they eventually got 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 a gist of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did um, you ever get banned from any grounds? Yeah, uh, got first ban in orders, eighty nine, Oldersfield in the cup away, got a six month ban. Uh, then I got banned again at Birmingham early 90s I think that was another six month ban and then uh, then when the civil banning orders come out 2000 they, they put me in one on. they had me down as a major leader at England Games and uh, we had some trouble in Greece in Athens um, because of that the uh, the British police decided to put a civil banning order on me they couldn't take you they couldn't actually arrest you for what happened in Greece but there was a new law come out civil law and every, I think every police officer that followed England, they had a trial in Nottingham at civil court, magistrates court, it was kangaroo court, and every police officer that used to follow England come to witness against me. And they gave me a three year civil banning order. And then uh, I knocked to England, Turkey, just after the Leeds thing at Sunderland's ground. And uh, they're basically telling me, they wrote me a letter saying, I, I want, at the time you, 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 you could go to, that was when England started changing from Wembley to, when the new Wembley was being done and they used to travel around the country doing games. Um, there was no law to say I couldn't drink in that city, but they reckon they sent me a letter saying I wasn't allowed in Sunderland that day, but I never got a letter. You know what I mean? I, I actually ended up getting in some trouble with uh, Sunderland fans after the game. I got arrested and uh, obviously went to uh, Crown Court in Newcastle. You know, and that's when I got eventually like uh, prison in Durham. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, then, then obviously that I mean, the civil banning order was just coming to an end. And then when because you went to prison, they could put a maximum six year uh, banning order on you. So I eventually got banned for nine years. I, got, I didn't see Forest for nine years. So, yeah. So when does it become tiresome then? Like, when you well, that, that 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 did become tiresome then because uh, I, I got really friendly with the Newcastle boys and. Uh, Obviously, at the time, they didn't really know the law. They said, I'm banned from England and Forest Games. So I thought, hang about, I'll go to Newcastle in Europe. And Newcastle in Europe, because we're under Robbie Robson, I started going to a few Newcastle away games in mm -hmm. Europe. Anyway, Newcastle coppers stopped me in Rot Rotterdam. I said, what are you doing here, Gary? Shouldn't be here. I said, well, nobody told me I can't go to Newcastle. So uh, anyway, Nottingham Police had a word back with me when I got back. And uh, then I got a, a letter from the uh, British police saying, oh, you're and your passport in for Newcastle games when they play in Europe. And there was in Europe in, the, in them group Champions League games. Mm. I was at the bloody police station in Arnold every every other week and my passport in then for about another six years. That got tiresome, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then you got to apply to go on holiday somewhere and they wouldn't give you, you couldn't go on holiday because you got to have your passport in. Uh, you know, things like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's, it's the... the the shit that happens after doing all that, you don't yeah, realise the extent. Yeah, and then, you don't, no. and then it's obviously it can affect family. It can affect, yeah, like you say, family yeah, holidays. holidays and everything. You know, you get stressed. You know, mm -hmm. and then I met my second wife, uh, just as the banning order were coming to an end in 2010, and uh, I had my son in 2009. And the uh, first game back, I thought I'll go to Forest and Leeds. First game back ever was Forest and Leeds. Couldn't get a bigger game. Uh, anyway, the local police. Uh, I went with my second wife and. Uh, and then I got friends with Forest captain at the time for a mutual friend, and he started inviting me in the players' lounge. And he had a security at Forest come up to me in the players' lounge. What are you doing in here? I said, Well, I've been invited in. You know, he couldn't he couldn't do anything about it. He didn't want me in. He said, I want a meeting down. And he invited me down the ground to have a meeting. They was going to put me on a, another civil banning order. They was going to try and put me on a civil banning order to ban me from Forest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I refused to go to the meeting. I didn't go to the meeting. Yeah. So, but they couldn't do anything about it. If I didn't turn up at the meeting, they couldn't do nothing about it. What was it like going back to a game after <laughs> being banned for? It was days? very weird, very strange, very weird, being weird, nervous? weird feeling. Yeah, I was nervous. I'm not telling lies. I was nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought the eyes, thought everyone's eyes was on me. You know what I mean? It, it was weird for a while. 
How were you treated in prison? Very good, actually. Uh, it wasn't too bad because uh, all the screws were Newcastle lads and I knew all the Newcastle boys and they, they told them, oh, I'm, all com I'm coming in. And they looked after me, actually, you know what I mean? So I got looked after, luckily, because it was a Cat A prison. Oh, there was murderers on me wing and everything, you know what I mean? And you're there for football, I'm here just football. When they told you on the door what you're doing, the geezer opposite me said, life. I ain't got a clue what he's doing. He was he, he wasn't very nice actually. I didn't really speak to him. On my door it says four month. And all he wanted to do was cause havoc, so I'd do me full four month, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So and he's not bothered, he's doing life, isn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that's that, yeah, but if you're doing life and somebody's doing four months, you're gonna be angry at him. Mm, do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. What was the daily routine like? I I kept myself to myself. I mean, they put me in with somebody that was a uh, him for fraud uh, defrauded a company he worked for and he was a family man um and he, he was terrified you know i looked after him they put me in with him um and then eventually they moved me to a an open prison and he didn't want me to go you know what i mean so i, I just stayed in it was 24 hour, 23 hour bang up you, you could go out for exercise but i'll just used to stay in there with my meals in there with him keep your head down you know what i mean no mm. confrontation then is he you know what i mean yeah uh, how hard is it when forest lose the reputation of being a team in Europe winning trophies to then getting relegated. Like, does that fuel you more, more anger going to the games? Or uh, yeah, well, they got relegated to the third league while I was on one of banning order actually, mm -hmm. and um, so I didn't see all the crap. You know what I mean? Going to bloody Chester away on a Tuesday night, but because uh, we were the big fish in the third league, and at the time a lot of our lads were on banning orders, about hundred of us. So that's when the firm started expanding, and we didn't, didn't really go. And uh, a lot of the little clubs took advantage of that. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. uh, and then once I got the six-year banning order, they put me on a radius. So I, I wasn't allowed to go within 10 miles of Nottingham Forest playing. But on, when I was on the civil banning order, I used to go to Cardiff away and just sit in the city centre and have a, a night out and a drink, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't allowed to go anywhere near it after that, you know what I mean? You clearly yeah. just love football. You'd have probably been with any team that mm. was playing if you could just go and watch them. Like. Well, that's what I did. I, I did start going to other games. I went to a few Newport County games. I got mates in Wales and... I used, to on, on the, I used to go for your Newport, nobody bothered you down there, the police didn't know who you were. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I used to do a few different games, you know what I mean? I used to go to Newcastle, I went up to Glasgow, did a couple of Rangers games, you know. Um, I went out of the way, I, did, I still wanted to watch football, but I, I went offside, you know what I mean? So did I still you, got me for football buzz. Did you fight for other firms? No, 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 no. I just went for a drink and a day out. Yeah. I wanted to, I was just watching pure football then. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because My, I know some boys have went. I know, I think it's Tottenham and Aberdeen have got a good connection. Yeah, they have. That's right. Which yeah, I thought yeah. was weird. I never knew yeah. that until last year. Like, yeah. Did you yeah. grow a connection with any other firms while you were active? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we 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 couldn't go friends with FC Cologne in Germany. Um, How so? Uh, well, I, got, I, went, I went over there for watch Newcastle uh, at uh, Leverkusen. Uh, because I said earlier, the police got me in Rotterdam and uh, I shouldn't really have gone, but I, I got paranoid and I stayed in Cologne. We were based, I was in Cologne and we were up the road like Nottingham to Mansfield. I got paranoid, and stayed in Cologne on my own and uh, I watched the game in this Irish bar. It's like this lad kept looking at me. Anyway, I got up and I went over to him. So what are you looking at? You know what I mean? He goes, uh, no, 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 no. I said, uh, he said, uh, you're Newcastle. I went, yeah, I'm Newcastle. He goes, I'm FC Cologne. I said, oh, okay, mate. I saw a beer, shook his hand, and I saw him Forrest up from Nottingham. He goes, uh, do you know Gary Clark from Nottingham? I said, I'm Gary Clark. And he won't believe me. I had my passport on me. He goes, look, I'm Gary Clark. He said, I, I remember watching BBC Hooligans Panorama, and Gary Clark's on there. You know what I mean? And we say mates, they invited me over to a clone game a few months later. Mm. So I went over and I thought he knew everybody. Anyway, after the game, played Hanover. Four of us went over. After the game, he took us to their pub, walked in their pub like, and he, he didn't really know anybody. There's about 50 lumps in there. And uh, I thought, okay, what's going off here? I'm going to get filled in here, you know what I mean? Anyway, he introduced me to one lad, lovely lad. He looked after us, uh, had a few drinks, you know, whatever, whatever else mm -hmm. you do. And uh, they took us around Cologne all night, ended up in some late night club, stayed mates forever. And then they started coming over to Nottingham and it just grew and grew. And now there's probably 50, 60 Cologne come over once or twice a year for a Forest game. There's a lot go over there. There's different friendships now. Mm -hmm. So we formed a really good friendship with FC Cologne. That's mad, isn't it? It's mad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're mates forever. There's a couple of them coming over. We're going to Valencia uh, December the 15th and a couple of them will fly out to Valencia to meet mm -hmm. us for a drink. See, when you were doing like Panorama and your face is getting seen everywhere, does that mm. enhance your reputation? Do you become more of a target for other firms? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, you did, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you do, because you, you know, you're on the uh, national TV Panorama, you know what I mean? You're a target. I won't very really like at Mule for a bit because obviously we're playing Mule that day, it was undercover police followed us. And everyone, yeah, the meal will lot of going. I'm on the phone, undercover camera, and the meal guys, who's it? Who's he think he is? You know what I mean? So, 
He does, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're a target, aren't you? You know what I mean? See if Millwall ever get to the Premiership. Do you think the 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 kind of fighting will become more rife? Well, they're still at it, aren't they? Yeah, they've never been in the Premier League, have they? Uh, they was in the old First Division, the late eighties. Uh-huh. The, the old, you, you could call it the Premier League. Now they yeah. came up for a couple of years, and the old Den went down there a couple of times. That was a bit hectic, you know what I mean? Yeah. So a very eerie place to go. Yeah. It but, would uh, be funny to see with them in the Premier League to see. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't think it changed. To be honest with you, I don't think that. They're, they're, I don't, like I said earlier, there's a conveyor belt of them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't think they, they've probably got the oldest hooligan firm in the world. You know, I think they were even in the sixties and seventies are still at it, aren't they? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Was it hard to see Forest slipping down the leagues? Yeah, it was. It was heartbreaking, really. You know, a big club like Forest. You know, European champions, and I think we're the first team ever to get relegated in Europe to get relegated to the third tier of the foot of the league. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was hard. You know what happened. It was a, it was a ownership uh, manage, managers spending money wrong money you know and nobody took care of the club you know what I mean and there was people taking money out of the club that come in to take over sort of taking money out of the club you know what I mean so it's a diamond spiral you know what I mean mm-hmm. so and it just went it just sort of decaying didn't it you know what yeah. I mean so, so seeing you have got a top fun he's are winning trophies to yeah. then be in the third tier for then you're banned from games did you mm. was it sad to see that fighting smaller fucking clubs as well and there's not many as strong in the firm because these are all get banning <coughs> orders like yeah. is that hard to see yeah a lot, a lot of little firms took the mickey you know what I mean mm. and Forrest got come unstuck at a few places you know what I mean because lads were on banning orders couldn't go you know and uh, obviously there was less tickets in them leagues for smaller grounds so you're only getting a thousand away tickets so less fans went and uh, and you were the, like the Manchester United in the third division so you're the big fish everybody wanted to fry you you know mm. what I mean um, Who's the top firms in these smaller divisions? Well, you know, you know, you look at teams like Portsmouth now that down there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, Derby are in the third division. They've got to be a big fish now, aren't they? You know what I mean? But back in there, Lincoln City were good. Lincoln City were always good, always tasty mm-hmm. firm, always well represented at England games. Uh, Plymouth Argyle, they've always had a top top mob in the lower leagues. You know what I mean? Um, there's, there's, there's one or two, like I've said earlier, you don't want to respect anybody. Everyone's got a little mob, you know yeah. what I mean? So, but uh, Lincoln were always good. I always rated Lincoln in the lower leagues over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about the rivalry between Forest and Derby? How how bad is that? Yeah, it, it stems, stems probably from the early early seventies, from the Clough Clough days, really. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a nasty rivalry. You know what I mean? It's it's gone on for a long time. You know, uh, we used to meet each other at Skegness for a bank holiday punch up. You know, we meet each other offside. They'd come on nights out down here, you know, when they want no football. You know what I mean? So any excuse to have a tear up with them. They'd vice versa. They'd come offside, you know what I mean? Did so, Clough get any stick for jumping from Derby to Forest? He's still worshipped at both clubs, to be honest with you. He's a, he's a god at Derby. Yeah. He's, a, he's a god at Forest. You know, Derby lads take the mickey about us because one of his most fav- famous sayings, when he le- I think when he uh, came to Forest and uh, he, he said, oh, Nottingham's never a football city, so they always give a stick over that. But I think that was just Clough trying to wind everybody up, you know what I mean? Mm. One of his tactics. Yeah. How uh, was it writing your book? Uh, yeah, it, I quite enjoyed it. It took about 12 months. Uh, Martin King wrote it, it's a Chelsea fan. Uh, he had his own book, book company at the time. He did a, quite a few books you know, around the country and spent a lot of time on the South Coast doing it with him. He'd come up Nottingham a lot. Quite, yeah, it was enjoyable doing it, mm. enjoyable experience, you know what I mean? Were you nervous releasing it? Not really, because I got permission off all the lads. You know, I, I told everyone up front we're doing it, and I said, if "You want to be in it? You can be in it. If you don't want to be in it, you know, I respected everyone's like, you know, mm-hmm. I respect everyone's, you know." Uh, like you say, once you once you write the book, it's a case. Oh, of, I'm not game I'm, over. I'm, I'm game over. Yeah, it's yeah. game over. Yeah, but yeah. Was there any regret or anything? Not really. No, no regret because I did it to get out of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There was other people who could have wrote books rather than me. You know, there's there's two or three top boys that could have wrote a book they could still write a book you know I was never at the forefront to write a book I did it for my own personal sacrifice really I, did, I wanted to get out of it I thought once you put pen to paper it's, it's, it's job done mm-hmm. you know what I mean it, cause it was a football was a drug wasn't it it's hard to get out of it once you're in it and I knew it was my time has gone you know I needed to move on I needed to settle down I needed to get out of children and you know, there's no, that's no life for family life is it you know what yeah. I mean so that's why I put pen to paper seeing you're in your 30s and stuff you're getting prison sentences mm. you're getting banning orders you're looking at older people did anybody ever say look what you're doing is you're just wasting your fucking life like get your shit together or was it just mm. a case of just keep doing what you're doing is everything's fine 
No, yeah, you yeah, know, it was getting a bit embarrassing. You know, you're getting nearly 40, you know what I mean? And I, I, I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't want to be the, seen as a, a, somebody in the 40s wearing Stone Island, going down the match and still looking <laughs> for trouble. You know, it's not a dumb thing. It's yeah. a young, young, you know, let the youngins get on with it these days, you know, back in the day, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I know a lot of few of the lads still like it, you know what I mean? But that's a, that's their choice, isn't it? You know, they do what they want to do, you know what I mean? What do you think about the young kids now who do that? Uh, I think it's all changed. It has changed. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of our lads go down the gym. You know, they, they do train, and you know, they're hard lads. You know what mm. I mean? The game. You know what I mean? But it's a different ball game now. I feel sorry for him because if they do anything wrong, they'll, they'll go straight to prison. There's cameras everywhere. You know, I, t I tell them it's not worth it, but it's their choice, isn't it? But, you know, I, I wouldn't like to see people getting involved in it now. To be honest with you, because yeah. the way you throw your life away, you start getting in trouble. You know, that some of them are in the twenties and thirties. You don't. You know, they have got good jobs, got mortgages. You know, you don't want to throw all that away, do you? You know yeah. what I mean? What's the biggest sentences you've seen getting thrown out? Oh, well, the biggest at Forest was that Everton, Everton thing. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah uh, there's a couple of other mates uh, from Stockport. He got six years once. You know what I mean? And you know, he's been on more banning orders than I've ever known in my life. You know, he come up for a drink with me the other week when we played Liverpool at home. I mean, he's out of it now, but I've never known anyone be so banned from football in my life. Mm -hmm. I think he spent half his life in jail for football, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a bit much, though, isn't it? No, it is. It's too, you know, it's too oh. much. We laugh about it, like but I said, you know, we laugh about it now, but he, he's turned his life around as well, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, Who's the top boys at Forest? Well, the, the older the, 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 the older generation from the 70s, you know, they're, they're probably five years older than me. Um, my, one of my good mates, he, he's always been our top boy. We call him One Punch. You know, he, he went to Middles jail at Middlesbrough. I always respect him and I love him to bits. And he's one of the oldest men I've ever seen at football. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but uh, we all move on. He's moved on. But there were several lads above me. I, mean, I was second generation. There was the seventies generation. I was the early eighties. I was a casual generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of lads around me backed me up. They were older than me. You mm -hmm. know, I come to the north of stuff I, I, I did without them backing me up. You know what I mean? What's that like going running towards people and you've got people backing you up like? And you know they're not turning away. That like. well, it's, a, it's adrenaline rush, isn't it? It's a buzz. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You know you're not going anywhere. You know what I mean. Vice versa, they probably the opposition knew they weren't going anywhere, so it'd be a big tear up. You know what I mean. Till the till they, everyone had worn themselves out, or the police came. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. What's the biggest head to head you've came with at the firms? How many people in each? I came out with Man United at, at uh, Kilburn. They had about five hundred. They did that day the League Cup final. That was like the start of the London Marathon when you looked down that road. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was frightening. <laughs> you know what I mean? We actually stood it. We stood his ground for a while, but we just got turned over. The pub got turned over. But uh, you, you can you know, there's just too many of them. Pure swamped us. You know what I mean? But uh, we had some tasty rows with Middlesbrough over the years, toe to toe. Some good ones with Borough, Birmingham. You know what I mean? And Man United, we've had a few in Man United over the years. The League Cup Court Final, FA Cup Court Final, Old Trafford. That was a mayhem day as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's been, there's been several, you know, even the little ones. I used to enjoy it when they, uh, they want so many, when there's 50 of us. I got, I got a bigger boss when they want so many of us, you know what I mean? When you had the more tight knit group, you know what I mean? But there were so many games now, weren't there? There's games mm. every day. Like... Yeah, I don't know how people cope with it in Champions League now. Yeah. I was with Tottenham mates uh, last week and. Uh, they're in Europe. They went to Marseille last week and uh, they're in Europe. They're going to AC, Mil AC Milan soon and he's been to AC Milan twice the last few years. It's money and time off work, isn't it? It's that much football now. Yeah. You know, we'd, we'd love it if Forrest got back in Europe because we'd all go again. We haven't been for years, you know what I mean? Mm. So I booked Valencia. We've got pre-season friendly. Well, not pre-season, pre-World Cup and I'm taking my lad. It's an under celebration of Valencia's grand and Forrest has been invited over because Forrest was the first European team to play in Valencia in 1961. So we're, we're the guests to celebrate the 100 years of their stadium. Mm -hmm. So I booked, booked my boy, took my boy for Christmas. He's dead excited, you know what I mean? Did you ever walk about, like, without the football, walk about the streets and, and see rival firms and did anybody ever put it on you? Yeah, I've been in the wrong place at the wrong time a few times, you know what I mean? You've been down London, you know, and uh, you know you you knew you knew you want from you know you could tell by the clothes you wore and the swag you had you want the you want from the city and they put it on you you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's times in London you always get in London big city you go to a match you go offside for a bit have a few beers and you are back to train some pancreas you'd always bump into some mob mm -hmm. you know what I mean and you either get put on it put on you or you know yeah. Uh, Did you ever have any close calls where you're thinking fuck my life? Right in danger, oh, yeah. loads of times, loads of times. Yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> how do you get through it then? Like, how do you get? A, let's see, if you've, if you've had a good tear up, if you're out in the piss, that like, 
is it hard to sleep with the adrenaline or do you sleep okay no no you'd be thinking about it all night half the time you mm. know you're buzzing <laughs> yeah you're going through your dreams you know through your nightmares all dreams you know what i mean yeah oh. so see when it started becoming tiresome you started getting to prison like was it 39 mm. decided right enough's enough yeah that's right enough's enough you know what i mean i think it's getting to that big four row and i thought you know i can remember um, the police officers come up to me once I was up court for something and he, and he goes you're far too old for this Gary it's you know, about time you uh, got out of it and I, it, it did home actually when he said that to me I actually said to him I don't think I am you know what I mean but I, I thought his words rang true actually and I thought mm, he's right he's right you know what I mean what am I doing messing about at that age now? you know what I mean yeah right. so see when you you come out then if you've been involved for 20 years like how hard is that to tell people or do you just step away without telling anybody like, how does it work it was hard it was hard it was hard to get out of it you know what i mean i, I told a few close pals like but I, I still you know people look up to you and then people you know what we're doing next week or I, I deliberately went out the way offside I, I didn't want to go around in groups anymore you know i had my own little four or five mates i wouldn't go around i, I try to avoid the pubs because you can be in the wrong place at some time the wrong time sorry you know I, if i go to the pubs where i knew the lads were drinking something happened i'm in that pub you, you know i could be stood at the bar something might happen you know and because of my reputation or whatever i could get, i could get in trouble again so i, I deliberately avoided them pubs mm -hmm. for a long for a few years you know what i mean association basically just yeah he's guilty by association yeah. and, and, and they'll give you a banning order if you're seeing in a pub full of 200 boys for a game I actually got been. I was told when I started going back to Forest by the security, if we see you down here in a group of more than ten people, we're having you. We'll ban you from Forest. I was actually told by him when I started coming back in 2010. Mm -hmm. They actually warned me. So, yeah. how hard was it to stop? Like, <coughs> like you decided right enough's enough, and mm. say you know there was a good firm down the road and it was going to kick off. Like, is it like an addiction where you're totally fighting against it, or, or did it become easy because you knew that it was just becoming a waste of time? It, 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 it was easier because because obviously I got that banning order where I wasn't allowed for a, f for a few years from 2003 to 2004 and I wasn't allowed back till 2010 so I, I didn't go anywhere near it for a while and then when I just started going back down I, I first met my second wife and I started going to the matches with her so I, you know I got out of it gradually it took a few years I got, but I wasn't allowed to go so I, I went cold turkey anyway. You know what I mean? Was it like coming off fucking drugs? Like yeah, 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 it was, difficult. yeah. Yeah, 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 it was difficult. Yeah. Could you speak to other people who'd done the same, who stepped back from it? Yeah. Like I, I, fucking, I, I, like, fire, re I could, like rehab in it? Yeah, it is. It's like rehab, yeah. It's like a cocaine addiction, isn't it? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You have to go cold turkey. It takes a while to get off it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did anybody from your firm go, ah, he's losing it anyway, or any negative comments? I think one or two, but uh, there was one or two uh, said behind my back sort of thing. I know I know that for a fact because people had told me, you know what I mean? One or two had a moan, you know what I mean? But not didn't really, a lot of my, my main mates and the main lads, yeah, they put them right, you know what I mean? They stuck up for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that, is that a difficult thing when you if people start turning against you because you think you've turned against them by walking away? Not really, because the the, the people that did it were probably I, I know they weren't really front line anyway. You know what I mean? It's just a hangers on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I won't really I won't really bothered about it. You know, I, I decided to move on. It's my choice. I'm not listening to other people anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The um, Italian, is it Italian ninety thing you've done there? Yeah. The, what was that? A three part series? Yeah, three part series. Um, uh, it's called Italian 90 uh, the game changed forever because uh, I've, I, I saw 85 they wanted a documentary highlighting from 85 the bad times going up to 1990 how it changed the British game because they want, didn't want England going and then I don't think if we hadn't done so well when the, the fans would have got kicked out of Italian 90 I don't think there would have been a birth of the Premier League a couple of years later mm -hmm. so there wouldn't have been all that money coming in people would to put money into British football so it did change change you know football forever really mm -hmm. you know and england getting to the semi-final got the feel good factor back didn't it mm -hmm. you know what i mean brit for the british game yeah oh. how was that seeing england but semi-finals finals and does that make you miss it when you're seeing such big events and part of the wish you were well, bang involved or is it just being good mm, now being a family man and enjoying it more well yeah i didn't I, I didn't i didn't go to england i didn't go and watch england from 2001 um, up until my me, me lad wanted to go obviously he started like in England watching it on telly and I took him to a Nations game uh, two or three years ago and then obviously the Euros last last year uh, yeah, I sort of got the buzz because England started doing well and I managed to get a couple of uh, Germany tickets last minute the night before so I said to him we're going to England Germany uh, he, he was buzzing and then uh, we got the bug again for you know at Wembley it was a bit like 96 wasn't it 
you know, the feel good factor. And I, man, I went to the uh, semi final. I didn't take him to the semi final, but I took him to the final. I managed to get a couple of final tickets. So to watch the, uh, England in the final with your lad, you know, that gave me go. You know, that was good. I enjoyed that. Did you not go to the England game specifically because you were scared you'd get back involved again? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's too many idiots go now. I, I don't want to go anywhere near it. You know what I mean? And plus, the way I am, you know, there's always a chance someone who might have a pop at you. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to, I won't bother about it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. reputations precede themselves. You know, I didn't want to get back into that sort of thing. And there's always somebody willing to have a go because I'm quite high profile media now as well, do a lot of books documentaries and stuff there's always some lads who want to have a pop in there so mm -hmm. I, I've deliberately kept out of the way of it as well the yeah. problem is now my lad's got my lad likes England you know what I mean so what do you do is that <laughs> a, does that become a concern though as he, he starts to enjoy it and knowing who his dad's reputation is as well I, yeah he don't really he don't really know yeah he hadn't you know he don't really he ain't grasped it yeah you know what I mean but one day he's gonna he was, he was obviously gonna find out but obviously we'll talk we'll have a talk one day you know what I mean does that become a worry for you in case yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, but um, he, he's level-headed. He, he will know, you know, you know, he'll know it's all back in the past. You know what I mean? But there's always people going to tell him, isn't there? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. it's fucking worse of things to tell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and people yeah. in life, like, yeah. So, wait, how old is he now? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at schools and that, if you're on TV and mm, read, read yeah. them books, and this is the age now, isn't it? You yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of it with the internet as well. It's, it's handy, isn't it? You know, yeah. Online, YouTube, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know what so I mean? where do you go now for the future, Gaza? Uh, I follow cricket a lot. I follow England abroad at cricket. I'm going to Pakistan a week on Monday for the first test. So I've been, since I've been packed up the football, I've been going a lot of, a lot of cricket games away. I've been Barbados four times, and on four India tours, Sri Lanka, South Africa. Uh, Australia I follow England cricket it's a different type of people like you, you can have a drink the police don't bother you mm -hmm. you know they're nice people a lot of football lads start going to cricket as well you know behave themselves nowadays a bit like, like myself getting on a bit starts a bit of sunshine watch a bit of cricket and have a booze you know you visit yeah. tropical countries you never dream of going so I, I follow cricket all around the world now do you think you just like being in that sort of environment just yeah yeah I like sport you know and I like has it ever kicked off with the cricket fans very, I've, I've seen some trouble in Sri Lanka once. Uh, very rare. It's very rare you get anything. Uh, you know, everyone like you know, everyone has a bit of a laugh and talk about the old days. You get a lot of football as a good cricket. But everyone, ninety nine percent, everyone's well behaved. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just have a laugh together. You know what I mean? Even a lot of Derby for lads good to the cricket. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Keep themselves from themselves. You know what I mean? We don't really mix with them. But you'll say hello. But there's never no trouble. You know what I mean? See, when you're sitting in the cricket, watching the cricket, got a pint. Do you mm -hmm. ever look round and think, "Fuck me, man!" Look. Like, you're either, I'm, I'm either getting older I'm either just trying to live a safe life like, but yeah. do you ever question it and think yeah. you used to be front line yeah. man you used yeah. to be bang yeah. involved and now you're sitting in the cricket having yeah. a pint do you yeah. ever get paranoid as well that the, the coppers are still looking at you or does yeah. that surpass because I used to do shoplifting back in the day yeah. even yeah. now when I walk through yeah. the fucking alarms I still think this yeah. is going to go off here yeah. like, do you see when you're sitting in the crowd do you feel as if the coppers maybe still watching you, or is that paranoia go? No, you do. You do think that way. You do. It's still in your head. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of police officer come up to me at Brighton the other week, night game, and uh, he come chatting to me. But I've been told, I've been told now, because I've got a couple of mates who are in the force that used to go football and decided to go join the police force at a later date. And uh, they've, they've actually told me they're not bothered about me anymore. I'm not, I'm not on their radar anymore, which is good to hear, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's there's, you're always worried, isn't it? Like, yeah, like you right. say, association, bang for, you mm. know, you're locked up, you're banned yeah. for football for life. Like, yeah. How do you think you would have handled that if you got a, a life ban? But some people... Well, yeah, because it affect me some, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? I, mean, I wouldn't be able to take him to an England game or a Forest game, you know what I mean? It, it, it would have, it, it would have, that would have hurt me more than anything. Because mm -hmm. obviously, my me, me lad's banging into football, loves football. You know, I wouldn't be able to take him to Valencia in a couple of weeks, would I? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to take him to England Euro final last year. Yeah. You know, that would, it's a long term effect, isn't it? Thank God, you know, mm -hmm. the right time I got out of it. Uh, I fly out to, um, a week on Tuesday to um, Pakistan. I have to change planes, planes in Doha, guitar, find my guitar airways. And I actually changed planes the day England play Wales in that city. You know what I mean? So mm. I think I was saying, imagine if I get stopped in Doha and they turn you around. I'm, I'm going to Pakistan for the cricket. The cricket. You know what I mean, lads? They you know like what I mean? You're lying yeah, bastards. You know what I mean? I know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so see when you, like, people, see when you get a banning order, see if you go to a game and get caught, what happens? Well, you, you'd, you'd probably get a prison sentence or you'd be a big hefty fine and put another ban in order, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, yeah, you know. What's it like for the guys who do get life bans? 
I was, I was one or two of my mates on life bands, band, band from Forest for Life. You know, I think they're eating it now. You know what I mean? So mm. they, they can't go and watch Nottingham Forest. And they're, they're, they're my age and got a bit older. They own life bands. They can't, can't go to an home game. You know, it, you know, back in the Premier League now, you know, they couldn't go to Wembley last year. You're missing out now, aren't they? You know mm. what I mean? Uh, what was it like then? Obviously, trying to change your life, become more calmer, watching cricket, Forest getting into the playoffs. Mm. Like, was the old dodges coming back? No, no, no. I, I watched. I went to all the playoffs with my lad. I got to. I got to all the young games with my boy. I was just enjoying enjoying the atmosphere and, and the emotion of getting in the playoffs and going to Wembley and taking him to Wembley because he, he's been, he's had a season ticket since he was four. He's never seen any success. Mm -hmm. And going to Wembley when we beat Huddersfield, he actually he, he was roaring at a full time whistle. You know that that was one of the best days of my life watching watching Forest. If you forget all the cup finals and everything. After twenty three years about being out of the Premier League and going with your son and watching Forest win at Wembley, getting back to the Promised Land and seeing him the raw emotion coming out of it out of him, it gave me so much so much joy. You know what I mean? Uh, well, that's, you, that was better. That, that beats all the football hooliganism back in the day. Mm -hmm. Watching your son celebrate that Forest back in the Premier League that beats anything. Yeah, uh, most important. Most thing, important. Yeah, 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 it's fantastic. So see when you get. Get to the Premier League. What are you thinking then? Like twenty odd years, and you've been out of prison. You've mm. banning orders, and then this moment comes where you're like, "Listen, it's a it's the best league in the world." Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. with yeah. the names playing in it now, with the managers, mm. like it's a great league. But yeah. what you're thinking when you get, are you just happy that you can enjoy those moments with your son? Yeah, as yeah, part of right. you think, "Fuck me, man!" Like we're going to the big big leagues again no I don't think that way anymore I'll be mm. honest with you I, I, that, that will never enter my mind I, I'm, I'm just enjoying the, the, thing, the fact I'm taking him to Old Trafford uh, uh, Etihad the Emirates Tottenham I'm, I'm enjoying taking him you know what I mean it's about him now mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm just enjoying watching him enjoy it you know what I mean yeah. you know and hopefully Forrest will stay up this season and the bigger things are, bigger things are going to come mm -hmm. we've got a great manager great great club uh, great owner great backroom great chairman you know what I mean great board <coughs> so yeah so what do you think Forrest's chances are staying up this year uh, I, I thought at the beginning of the season we'd finish at least halfway but obviously we had that wobble and we, we had a lot of players come in to gel at the same time and things went backward a bit but Steve Cooper was that good a manager and the board kept faith the fans kept faith he didn't just become a bad manager overnight he's had a hard job to bring all these players together you know, and, and we're just in a bit of form now. And I think I think we will stay up. I do believe we'll stay up. We, you know, we're too good a manager. Uh, we've got good players, you know, and we're just starting to gel now. Mm -hmm. We've got that five-week break. Mm -hmm. uh, more time for them to gel together, get to know each other more. And I think we will stay up. Who's Forrester's greatest ever player? Well, uh, John Robertson. John Robertson and Ian Story Moore. They voted the best two ever. I would say John Robertson in my day. I didn't really see him story more, even though he's a good friend friend of mine now, and Robbo is as well. Uh, Stan Collymore, great centre forward I've ever seen down there. To be honest with you, I've got, we had two years of Stan. You know, I enjoyed w watching Stan, but the, the European Cup team—they're all good players. You know, we had some great players over the years. Roy Keane was brilliant. Nigel Clough, you know, we had Martin O'Neill, good. Martin O'Neill, yeah, great, great player. You know what I mean? Two Champions Leagues, man. Yeah, so he, you know, you can't, you know, you can't. That, he, that won team. Two, he won two, he won two, yeah, he won two, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, I've become good friends with that, with that side now, mm -hmm. you know, through, through my mate, um, who made a film about, about that. I believe in miracles. I've got to know him all the last few years. I have mm -hmm. him down at Colton Town as guest speakers now, they, mm -hmm. and they all come down here for nothing, you know, give up the time on a Saturday afternoon in the clubhouse, do a quick QA, and none of them want anything, you know what I mean? They're good as gold, all of them, John O'Hare, brilliant people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, How is it looking back in your life so far? I've enjoyed it, you know. It's been a roller coaster. Don't get me wrong; it's been a roller coaster. I don't, I, I don't regret anything, you know. I've, I've lived life to the full, you know. I've had a good time. You know, I've seen a lot of countries, met a lot of good people, you know. And for the football, I wouldn't know all these people if it weren't for the football. You know what I mean? I, I visit people in different places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a roller coaster, but it's been more ups and downs. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about your second book? It's coming out. Yeah, we've started work on the second book. I'm doing it with a. A co-author. He was. He, he had a checkered past back in the day in Nottingham. Different. He's a Forest fan as well. But he, he runs a global world charity now called World Game Changers. I, I'm a patron for them. We do a lot of good stuff in the community. Um, so I've been helping them out the last couple of years. I got to know them during COVID. I did a couple of uh, books, chapters for them in, in their books, and we decided to write a co-book. Uh, started on it last week. We're doing another chapter tonight after we've finished it's called uh, angels with dirty faces mm -hmm. you know i can turn your life around you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know it's not all doom and gloom even though what we did in the past but now we do a lot of good stuff in the community you know i work down here for this club 
you know, I work for that charity as well. So we try and put a bit back, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier, having a positive impact because you yeah. do a lot for this club. Let's talk about this club and give it a shout out. So yeah. what is it you do here? I'm a marketing commercial, commercial manager, marketing commercial manager. Uh, I've, I've got to know him last few years. I used to come up with a few fundraisers at Christmas, got to know the chairman. And during COVID, uh, we weren't allowed to go and watch Premier, uh, First Division football, but non-league football, you could still come and watch it. So I started coming down to a few games, really enjoyed it, you can have a drink at the side of the pitch. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the uh, commercial manager had passed away through COVID. So there was a, a void at the club. We left it, out of courtesy, you know, out of, to the family and everything. We left it one. The chairman asked me, do I fancy doing the job? And I thought, oh, yeah, it's a privilege. You know, yeah, I'll come on board. You know, he knows I know a lot of people. I can bring a lot of funds into the club. Got a lot of good mates willing to help out. You know, and I get contacts and uh, I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Putting And I feel, believe in putting something back into football and taking it out like I did in the 80s, you know what I mean? Yeah, so this is uh, Carlton Town. Carlton Town Football Club, yeah. How was it when you first came? Was there any raised eyebrows because of your past? Yeah, I think there was. I mean, uh, the chairman told me recently, you know, he said, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. He said there was one or two people questioning the decision, you know, why are you, why are you taking Gary on, you know, with his checkered past. But the chairman said, you know, he's a complete change guy, you know what I mean? We've got the total faith in him and he backed me to the hilt, you know, and um, which is great, isn't it? You know, yeah. somebody's having a bit of faith in you because not everybody has faith in you because they look at the past all the time and they think you don't change, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but fair play to you, man. Like, for anybody that's watching, because you've been a man who's been in the, involved in it to then changing his life, for anybody that's maybe in a life of crime or being dodgy like, or maybe struggling in life, what advice would you have for them? I'll say, that, you know, you can, you can turn it around, you know, there is life after after it, you know what I mean? I've done it myself, you know, I was in the doldrums, you know, and like other people you interviewed, you know what I mean? You, you can move on. If you, you know, if you put your heart to it, you can set your mind to it, it's a mindset, you can move on. I know a lot of people, my mate uh, runs a boxing club in Nottingham and he was in gang culture back in the day and uh, he's done exactly the same, he helps out in the community. So you can turn it around, you know what I mean? So, there, you know, don't give up. Yeah. Right. What about your, your? Where can people buy your book? Your first book, Amazon. My first book's still on Amazon. Um, the second one will be out in all back in February. That'll be a, a available on Amazon. It'll be available in good book, good bookshops as well. We'll do a launch down here. We do. I think we're doing a, going to a launch in Murphy Town. Murphy Town Football Clubs. We've got a relationship with Murphy Town now as well. We mm -hmm. play each other uh, pre-season friendlies. We went to Murphy this summer. They came up to us last year, but they're turned to come up here next year. That's from a, a good friend that works at Forest, uh, the collection there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, What's your social media in that, Gary, just in case people want to get in contact? I'm on Facebook, Gary Boatsy Clark, uh, on Twitter, Gary Boatsy, uh, and then Instagram is Gary Boatsy Clark as well. What does Boatsy uh, mean? Uh, that's my nickname back in the day. I, I, I had some trainers in the early 80s when I was about 16. I've always had big feet. I remember Puma GV list come in when we used to wear tight faded jeans and that. I come in the pub one day with these new blue trainers on. One of the lads went, they look like boats. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was only 16 and uh, he just stuck. Everyone stuck. called me boats so, You know what I mean? So yeah. he's just stuck ever yeah. since. Gary, yeah. for coming on today, brother. Yeah, Listen, nice I thoroughly enjoyed James. that. No problem. Would you like to finish up on anything? No, thanks for coming down to see me. You know, I've enjoyed it. You yeah. Know. No. thanks again mate yeah. and once you get your second book out man we'll yeah. get you back on again Brilliant. Nice cheers one, brother thanks god bless you and you mate you. top man cheers mate